All right, uh, welcome to the SSW Tech News. My name is Adam Kogan, and uh, we have plenty of news on tonight. And the first news that we have is .NET MAUI, okay? The news is that we have Preview 11, so we're getting closer and closer to go live. Uh, they've announced uh, what's in there, and we're doing some work on it already, so we care about this. Uh, one of the guys is even writing a book on this. So um, at the moment, they've just told us that we've got button entry and uh, editor, so you can see what it looks like in dark mode and light mode, looks good. We also have the ability to uh, work out what window we have, so we've got references to windows, so we've got lots of windows open, uh, that is what that looks like. Uh, if you have an iPad, you might recognize this problem where you have uh, to have split screens. I initially never used split screens with my iPad, but uh, once you work it out that one app goes nicely to another, the good thing is every time you open that app, it's already got that. So uh, we've got support for that, which is good. Now, we know that C Sharp 10 got nicer, like uh, it got a lot more simplified. You don't have using statements and uh, well, you don't need to reference everything all the time anymore um, and lots of others. So when you go file new uh, MAUI project, if you look under the covers, the code is a lot neater. And here's an example, there, there's no uh, using statements here, et cetera. Anyway, that's the MAUI news. Hope, hopefully you'll uh, like that. If you don't, you'll be using it soon anyway, when you because it'll be the best uh, mobile platform. What's next? Well, I thought I might mention that um, that design system we were just talking about, the Fluent UI, uh, that already has, um, that already exists, so you can look at this. What could I look at here? I'll just look at controls and patterns, that might be useful. But if you're not familiar with this, you should be familiar with it because uh, it is, uh, a lot of people say it's a lot better than Material UI. Uh, let's have a look, what have we got here? We got, you could look at um, the breadcrumb bar, that always matters, and that's what the breadcrumb will look like. You can resize it. If you wanted to know what the, um, you know, what it can do, uh, what, it, what all the little pieces are called, how you reference it with XAML or C Sharp, that's how you do it. I could look at some other examples, just give you a second one. Um, what else? A date picker, that, uh, I remember this being the biggest pain in the neck in the early days. How's our date picker work? Well, let's have a look. You pick a date and this pops open. So that's the default styling. And how do you reference it? Well, there's the XAML and there's the C Sharp, okay? So that, that should give you a quick introduction to, um, uh, to what you can do with Fluent UI, but it's a, a big system and it's a nice layout system. So let's jump into the next one, Visual Studio. Now, I would say uh, most of our devs, I'd say the, the vast majority of them here at SSW use Visual Studio for the C Sharp part and for Angular or uh, React or the, the UI system, Blazor maybe. They're into VS Code. Some, some use VS Code for both. But uh, VS Code is getting better and better all the time. Uh, Visual Studio 2022 Preview 2 is out. And what is in there? Well, let's have a look at this first one. This should make you happy. Have a look at this. I, I, if you look over on the right, you'll see that we're comparing branches. So now we can compare branches. That is really handy. I think most of you would think that's super cool. Uh, if you think that this is cool, please put it down in the comments, like if this is really important to you. I'm also interested to know if you don't care about it. Uh, what else have we got here? All right, here's another one. Uh, we can now grab any single commit and check that out, okay? Is that useful to you? I'm certainly interested to know. Um, uh, that's certainly useful in many scenarios we have. Uh, let me go down to another one. What else do we have? Okay, so let's have a look at this one. So this one here, may, can I zoom it? Let me just zoom it a little. Um, how often do you have the situation where you want to create a branch, but you've got a couple of repos? So you've got a repo for the, you know, the C Sharp API, and you've got another repo for the Blazor front end, say, 
and you'd create two branches, but you have to name them exactly the same. Well, now we can come in here, um, select the two repos and go new branch. Is that cool? I'd like, certainly like to know. Um, so it kind of just, if you have a look here, you know, you go new, new branch, it essentially just does that for you, that, that manual step that you do, it does it for you automatically and it actually creates two branches. Let's look at the next one. Okay, we, ha we have this scenario maybe where you start a new PBI and you're, you do the first part, it's quite easy, so you fix that little problem and then you start working on the other problem and instead of that being a, a little thing, you think, oh gosh, that's gonna take me half a day, a day. You've already just fixed a little bug. So you can go back to it, select this text, and then over on the right, do you see this? Stage change, you can commit that little piece. So I think that's pretty cool. Um, I certainly know if you guys uh, would use such a feature. Now, by the way, a lot of these features already exist in an add-on. Some of our devs use this one. So this is Kraken. Um, it does some of this stuff. You'll see creating and managing pull requests here. Um, you can see the commit history with these nice lines. Uh, you have a nicer terminal experience. And uh, here are some warnings for some merge conflicts and resolving merge conflicts. Anything that helps you resolve uh, merge hell is excellent. So uh, there's certainly some of the guys here that are fans of that. Um, Andrea certainly uh, promotes it a bit. Now let's move on with some other things. Uh, let's have a look, what have we got here? We got ability here to keep your code clean. So if you want to, um, maybe every time you save your file, you, you've got to remember that everybody in the team should format the document, remove unnecessary using statements, um, remove unused variables or add the this and me qualifications. The problem occurs when one of the developers forgets to do it, it's kind of annoying. So they have added this feature where when you save it, it will automatically fix it. It will automatically run the code cleanup commands. So that's helpful. Um, now, this, is, uh, this next one is about when you make changes to your code, you, developers are always pressing Control S all the time, okay? Similar to anyone that's written a Word doc that has lost a document, they're probably still pressing uh, Control S, but you can now, in Word document, click on, in the top left-hand corner, auto save changes when I'm, whenever I'm doing it. We've got the same magic now in Visual Studio. So if you are working and you switch to another window, let's just say you switch out to uh, I, um, uh, Edge, it would automatically save that file. So that's what, now some devs might not want that automatically. They do not, you know, devs like control. I'd certainly be interested if you told me I would never use that feature. That would be um, interesting. I think most, certainly young devs that get used to how this works, they'll prefer it, I think. Um, we have this, okay, so let's have a look at this. Let's uh, open this up. So right click and we go to definition, favorite F12 command. When you are jumping into a NuGet package, that can work quite nicely. Um, if you're debugging, wouldn't it be nice for that to always work? Well, the answer is it will now jump into the code what is the story behind it? This is using some technology known as SourceLink. And SourceLink, uh, basically, when you have a .NET assembly, the package owner, the NuGet package owner, can embed the source control metadata. They can um, uh, include um, that in the package. And then the developer who's using that package will have a much nicer debugging experience. So that's the story. Um, with this uh, F12 working nicely in debugging. I think it's pretty cool. In the old days, you had to set up um, uh, symbol servers and there was a, a huge pain around configuring that. Now it will just work. Uh, and of course, if the, the new get package owner doesn't have it enabled, send him that link and tell him, I want a nice debugging experience 
um, uh, support this feature. Um, and there we also have this. So at SSW, we uh, certainly like uh, keeping our code consistent. This editor config is awesome. It's really awesome. Uh, to set it up, there's a whole lot of text commands. Uh, so you just go into um, a file and, and do it uh, in the correct format. You now have a nice GUI. Is that cool or does that not matter? I think it's pretty good. And of course, if there's any C++ developers out there, don't worry, there's a bit of love there for you as well. All right, let's uh, move on to the next piece of news. And the next piece of news that um, is live share has been improved. Now, when one developer is helping another developer, they typically will use Teams and then they will share screens. And then the other developer is saying, uh, can you just click there? Can you type this command? No, 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 not like that, like this. Can you do that? Uh, and if they try to uh, you know, actually take control, the, you know, the machine is set up in a different way. Uh, we have this better way of doing it where you're using live share. And that allows you to basically have the same editing experience as you normally do, but you're editing their code for them. Uh, we now have this chat, so we can chat in here. Now, we've always done the chatting in Teams. Uh, I have, I'd certainly love to know if anyone knows, because I don't. Uh, is this using Teams? Is this, uh, when I jump over to Teams, will I see the chat history there? That would be the first question I would wonder. Uh, and does this matter to you or not? Certainly, certainly cool to know. Um, all right, let's jump over to a DevOps uh, issue and let's talk about GitHub Actions. So GitHub Actions, if you, let's right click on here. Let's look at this UI. When I am trying to create a new uh, action, it will, it will have these recommendations. Now it's been improved, so those recommendations are based on the existing projects that you have in the source code, it looks at all that, it uses AI and then it recommends what's here. So if you have a .NET um, Angular project, it will recommend different things for um, than if it's uh, some other Python project. So uh, I might just uh, mention something while I'm here. Uh, better software suggestions. Uh, there is something where I thought this wasn't perfect. So it, we have some projects that are using Azure static sites and it doesn't, re it doesn't recommend, well, the deployment doesn't recommend uh, static solutions. You know, there's a couple of offerings from Azure. And also we have some bot projects and it, it just the deployment solutions down there, the ones that are recommended aren't the, uh, the ones I'd expect from Microsoft being you know, Azure bot service. Okay, so anyway, uh, let's go back. Uh, now, uh, one other little thing I'll just mention, we now have these categories here, which is kind of nice, so you can look at the different categories. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the news on GitHub Actions, getting better and better. All right, two more pieces of news. This is Microsoft Teams. Now, I, I have trouble with people that have noisy environments and don't use mute. I do like to remind them, please turn it on to mute so we have a nicer call. Now, imagine if you were in a really noisy environment, like you're working on a, on a, on a construction site or you, know, you had some very no noisy people around you. It might be simpler to use a walkie-talkie feature where you hold, press a button when you want to talk and when it comes off, it goes back to mute by default. Well, they've added this and in fact, you can, uh, let's just look here, you can actually uh, just work it so you're hitting a button, um, push to talk, okay? The buttons, I'm always amazed how many people don't use buttons. You know when people try to take a selfie and they take a selfie and they're trying to push the little button on the screen when they can just take the selfie and push the button. It's so much easier, same story here. All right, what other news? AngularJS, long-term support is efficiently discontinued. 
Well, I thought that uh, AngularJS was RIP many years ago, but we have come across a few clients uh, recently that uh, are still hardcore on AngularJS, and uh, some of the guys have been uh, a little harsh on their sprint rev on their um, spec reviews on on that. You need to get rid of AngularJS, and now you have some documentation why you have to get rid of it. Okay, before it was common sense. Uh, now it's uh, now it's a must. All right. Okay, let's talk about the last piece of news. Just a little bit of fun here. Um, robots are pretty good at moving around. You see them walking around doing things. What they're not good at is picking up things using hands. Now, these developers in Korea, in Korea, let's assume South Korea, I assume, uh, that uh, there is 200 bones in your body, 54 of them are in your hands. All right, so that makes it the most complicated part in your body. How's that? So check out what they've done. Let's have a look at some examples here. Look at this. So you can move all the fingers. They can all close, or one can open, etc. Now let me just go ahead. And uh, look, look, look at all the different actions you can do with your fingers, all right? So you can control every little thing. Now it's got sensors on it, so it knows what it's looking at. Okay, so let's look at some real examples. Check this out. What's the first thing we're gonna pass it? We're gonna pass it a can and that. Now, let me pause that for a second. See how the fingers moved a little bit differently for each one? I guess you don't think about that, but you need to, to pick it up. Okay, let's pick, give it something else. Okay, now let me pause that again. See how to pick up the ball? You've had to move your fingers slightly differently than a can. Okay, what else will we give it? Tennis ball and a can. Now look at this. We've only used, uh, we've used three fingers here and three fingers here, but we've used them in different configurations. Have you ever done so much thinking about how your fingers work? And let, let's, what's the, uh, what have we got here? Okay, two different things. One uses four fingers and one just uses two fingers. Is that cool? <laughs> Maybe not. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Okay, let's move on to uh, a different example. You could actually, if you were keen, you could buy this thing and get it to pour your Coke for you. Wouldn't that be great? You can get it to pick it up, pour your Coke automatically, no mistake. And then when it's finished, it can crush it. How, fair, how cool would that be? Wouldn't you love that? <laughs> and of course, it's strong, it can pick up weights. And if I speed through, see it can pick up even more weights. Speed through, can pick up even more weights. Look at this, this is fantastic. Who wants to come back as a robotic hand? I would, okay. All right. Now, hopefully you enjoyed the news. Um, the, there are heaps of um, past videos here uh, on SSW TV. If you're not subscribed, join it. Um, and I will see you in the next one.